Shalom, 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 Israel. Most high in Christ bless. Once again, this is 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Amaziah with me today. Soldier Mahalalil. I have Soldier Mahalalil once again with me. All right, today's topic, today's topic. We're going to prove to you that Cornelius in the book of Acts chapter 10 is an Israelite. Okay, we're going to prove that thing right here. He ain't no Gentile. He ain't no Italian. He ain't no Roman. Okay, we're going to prove that right now. Give me the book of Acts chapter 10. We're going to start right at verse 1. Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So this Cornelius was a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A lot of our people read that and say, oh, he was an Edomite. He was a white. God talking to Esau too. No the hell he ain't. God hates Esau. That's what the Bible says in Romans 9.13. E. Cornelius was not an Italian. Just like today, we have Israelites on the police force today. It's the same thing. Give me the definition of centurion. Centurion from vocabulary.com. Uh huh. Anci a noun, ancient Rome, the leader of a hundred soldiers. That's the, in ancient Rome, that's the leader of a hundred soldiers. Anything else? A hundred soldiers. In other words, a commander in the ancient Roman army. That's what Cornelius was. Does that make him an, an actual Italian? No, it does not. Do we have police chiefs uh, in, in every ghetto uh, of America right now that are black or Israelite men? Yes, every last one of them. Same thing. Read it again, verse 1. Verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, uh -huh. a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He was a, he was a soldier in the, the band called the Italian band. Keep reading. A devout man. Uh-oh, wait a minute. This Cornelius was a devout man. Devout man. Let's see what that word devout means. And let's see if it fits Esau today. Devout. Having or showing deep religious feeling or commitment. So he was a, he had deep religious feelings or commitments to what? Keeping God's laws. That's what it's about. He was keeping God's laws. Is there anything else on that? Keep reading. Totally committed to a cause or belief. Totally. This this devout man was totally committed to a cause or belief. Cause of what? His people. Okay. Keep reading. Devout, uh, verse, two, verse two, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. Wait a minute. So not only was Cornelius in order and had a strong commitment to, to keeping God's laws and whatnot, but it just read with all his house, his, his wife, his children feared the Lord too. Read. Which gave much alms to the people. He also gave alms to the people. So he was about his people. He was committed to his people. Read. And prayed to God always. And prayed to God always. Read. He saw in a vision, evidently about the night. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me Acts 2 and 5 before we move on. Because he's a devout man. Let's see who else is devout. Or Edomites devout. Or did God in Habakkuk 2 and 4 say, they spirit ain't right. I'm going to go with Habakkuk 2 and 4. Read. Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. So we're talking about Jews. Read. Devout men. What were they? Devout men. They had a strong commitment to keeping God's laws. That's what the word devout uh, means. Read. Out of every nation under heaven. So these Jews that were in Jerusalem at the time were from every nation under heaven. They were from all over the place. Likewise, Cornelius. Go back. Verse 2 again. Acts chapter 10 and verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, uh -huh. which gave much alms to the people uh -huh. and prayed to God always. He prayed to God always. Go ahead. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid uh -huh. and, and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, 
thy prayers, thy prayers, and thine alms, your prayers, Cornelius, and your alms are come up for a memorial before God. Wow! Imagine getting that word to you. Your prayers and your alms are now a memorial before God. They've come up as a memorial before God. God loved that thing. He didn't love that thing for me, so I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to inform you. Give me Sirach 1722. Let's go to the Apocrypha 1722. Let's talk about these alms givings and such. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 and verse 22. The alms of a man is a signet with him. The alms of a man is as a signet with him. Go ahead. And he will keep the good deeds of man as the apple of the eye. Uh huh. And give repentance to his sons and daughters. See what the Bible says? By your alms, it's like a signet with the Most High God. That's like your stamp. That, re that, that reduces your sins, brothers and sisters. The Lord's going to have favor on you when you give alms. When you do alms deeds, okay? Go back. Go back. Read 4 again. Acts chapter 10 and verse 4. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Uh huh. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Give me First Peter three twelve. I'm coming right back to Acts. First Peter three and twelve. Let's get a little more about this, uh, this act here. First Peter chapter three and verse twelve. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Wait a minute. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Being righteous is keeping God's laws. You can read about that in Deuteronomy 6.25. Read. And his ears are open unto their prayers. You see what the Bible says? The Bible says his ears, God's ears are open unto the prayers of those keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Read. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. We know who the evil is. It's Esau. So this can't be talking about Cornelius anyway. Go back. Acts chapter 10 and verse 4. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Read. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh-huh. He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Okay, cool. So now the spirits, the angel says, go talk to Simon. OK, go. To, he's chilling with another Simon, the Tanner. All right. Give me verse nine. Verse nine. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Uh huh. And he became very hungry. OK. And, and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He went to sleep. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, uh -huh. and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts. All manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, and creeping things, insects, and fowls of the air, birds. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter. Kill and eat. So now let's talk about this vessel real quick in verse 11. What is this vessel? Give me Hosea 8 and 8. Now on this vessel is all manner of four-footed beasts, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air, right? Hosea 8 and 8. Let's explain the vessel. Hosea chapter 8 and verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Uh-huh. Now shall they be among the Gentiles. They, now shall they be among the other nations as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. See that? Now they're scattered as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Israel is scattered as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. They're just like the other nations. They're just like the Gentiles. Hence, they're called Gentiles. Wow. Go back. Acts. Go back. Chapter 10 and you, verse 11. Read, you read 11 again. And saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him. The vessel is talking about Israel. Read. Particularly northern kingdom. Read. As it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners. At the four corners. Hold that. Deuteronomy 32, 26. 
Knit at the four corners. What does that mean? Knit at the four corners. This vessel is knit at the four corners. Hmm. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 20, chapter 32 and verse 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. Wow. I'm going to scatter Israel into corners. What? Corners? The four corners of the earth. Read. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. I'm going to make the remembrance of the Israelites to cease from among men amongst the four corners of the earth when they're scattered among the Gentiles. If you don't have your nationality and you're in a strange land that's, that you're not native to, what are you called? You're called after the lands of that name. You're called Gentile names. Why? You're scattered among the Gentiles. Right. Simple. Go back. So we're talking about the nation of Israel here. Go ahead. Chapter 10 and verse 11. And saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending un unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners uh -huh. and let down to the earth. Uh -huh. Verse 12. Wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Read. And there came a voice to him. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. So guess what we're proving? This is not talking about actual animals to eat. Read. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Uh-oh. Why in the hell would Peter say not so? Don't I'm not eating that. Read. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ is dead. If the Christian rhetoric and doctrine is true that you can eat whatever the hell you want, how in the hell is Peter in Acts 10 telling the Lord, I never ate anything unclean? What, but didn't the Lord clean it? I thought the Lord cleansed all, every, all for you can eat all anything you want. So why in the hell in Acts 10, Peter's saying, I don't eat nothing unclean after Christ is already dead and nailed it to the cross. Right, Christians? Keep reading. Verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. That call not thou common. Hold that, Ezekiel, Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-three. What I cleanse, don't call common. Let's see the prophecy. Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-three. Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven verse twenty-three. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. The nation of Israel no longer, when Christ returns, will no longer will have idols. They will not defile themselves anymore. Read. Nor with their detestable things. Read. Nor with any of their transgressions. Uh huh. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places. Read. Wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. And, and, and what? Will cleanse them. And God is going to cleanse them. The nation of Israel, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. They, they're going to be my people, and I'll be their God. But right now, when they're scattered among the Gentiles, being evil as hell, following idolatry, they're just like the Gentiles. I'm going to call them Gentiles. Go back. Go back. Acts 10, and give me verse 19 now. Acts chapter 10 and verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision. Peter thought on this vision. Now, he awake. He thought on his vision. The spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Uh -huh. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. Don't doubt nothing, Peter. Go ahead. For I have sent them. Uh -huh. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? What y'all doing here? Remember now, Cornelius sent men to go see Simon Peter. Go ahead. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man. Cornelius, a just man. And one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews. Uh-oh. He had good report among the Jews and feared God. The Jews knew of him. He was a centurion. He had a position in the Roman army. Read. Was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into the, his house and to hear words of thee. Then called that's it. Give me jump to verse 27 now. So now I'm going to I'm going to fill in the spaces. You can read this on, all on your own. They meet uh, um, Cornelius. Now they have a meeting with Cornelius 
and all his friends and his cl- his close friends and his kinsmen. Go ahead. Verse 27. Tw- verse 27. And as he talked with him, he, as he talked with with, with uh, uh, Cornelius, he went in and found many that were come together. Uh huh. And he said unto them, Ye know, this is Peter speaking, I'm sorry, not Cornelius, Peter. Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for it a, is an unlawful thing. It is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. So Peter seen all these Gentile brothers and sisters and says, you know, it's, a, it's unlawful for me to be here right now. I'm not supposed to be around y'all right now. God said, y'all not a nation no more. I'm not supposed to be around y'all. But let's see what else, what else Peter says. But God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That goes back to Acts 10, 15. Read Acts 10, 15 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed that... Sorry, that call not thou common. Don't call what I cleanse common or unclean. Now, read, to, read the, bo- the bottom again of 28. But God, verse 28, but God have shewed me that I should not call any man. Any what? Any man. No, any beast. Any man. Cre- creeping things. Any man. Any man. It's talking about man. It's not talking about literal animals. Common or unclean. So that pertains to the nation of Israel being Gentiles, brothers and sisters. God has cleansed that now. You have a chance at what? Repentance now. Go to verse 34. Verse 34. We're going to read through 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said. So now, Peter now realized what the vision was about when he was in the trance on the roof, on the housetop. He realized that's talking about man. That's talking about northern kingdom, the Gentiles. Now, he says what? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Because what was going on? Southern kingdom had something against northern kingdom. You ain't, you ain't a Jew. You're, 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 you're Gentile. You're a Roman. You're this. You're an Ephesian. Get out of here. We're the mighty Jews. We keep God's laws. But guess what? There's no respect of person but God. Repentance is open to the northern kingdom, just as it's open to the southern kingdom. They got a chance. Northern kingdom got a chance at the kingdom. Just as southern kingdom has a chance at the kingdom. Read it again. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Read. But in every nation. Uh-oh. In every nation. He that feareth him. He that fears God. And worketh righteousness. And his laws. Is accepted with him. Woo! That sounds like it's told by anybody in all nations. Go back to Acts 2 and 5, brothers and sisters. Go back to Acts 2 and 5 and see who's scattered in all nations. Acts 2 and 5. Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. The Jews. Devout men. What were they? Devout Devout men. Devout men. Strong commitment to God. Out of every nation under earth. Go back. Go back now. Now we know who's scattered in all nations. It's the Jews that's under the covenant that's scattered in all nations. That's who it's talking about. 35 again in 36. Acts chapter 10 and verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Read. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Woo! There you go right there. It's talking about the children of Israel. Read. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. It's talking about the children of Israel. Hold that. Wait a minute. Go back to Acts. Acts. Go back to Acts 10 and 4. So it says, 36 said, the word which was sent unto the children of Israel. Well, let's get some of the word that was sent to one to some words that was sent. Verse 4 again. Acts chapter 10 and verse 4. And when he looked, saw the three, verse three, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God, uh, a what? An angel of God. This is some words coming out, coming into him, uh, into and, who? Cornelius and saying unto him, Cornelius. Uh huh. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Uh huh. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. My, your prayers and your alms are come up before a memorial 
for what? Let me before I jack it up. I'll read myself. Thy prayers and thy honors are come up for a memorial before God. So those words were to who? An Israelite, brothers and sisters. Read 36 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Okay, give me Acts. Jump to 44. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard how, the word. How the, how the Holy Ghost going to fall on some Gentiles when the word was not meant for them? We just read who the word was meant for in verse 36. Keep reading. And they of the circumcision. They of the southern kingdom. Which believe were astonished. And said what? As many as came with Peter. They or the, the southern kingdom. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. On those Gentiles were poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Give me Acts 15 and 14. Acts chapter 15 and verse 14. Simeon have declared how God at the first did visit. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me Isaiah 7 and 8 first, just to go with Acts 10, 44. I got two scripts for y'all. Isaiah 7 and 8. What happened to Northern Kingdom? What happened? Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 8. Why would eight. they need to be called? Why were they called Gentiles and such? Go ahead. For the head of Syria is Damascus. Uh huh. And the head of Damascus is resin. Read. And within three score and five years uh -huh. shall Ephraim be broken. Ephraim or Israel. Ephraim was the head of the northern kingdom. Israel or Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. So they were not a people after they was they was uh, went into captivity, brothers. They lost everything. So now they have to do what? Come back. They, they have to be brought back under the fold, under the sheepfold, under the covenant, brothers and sisters. They will call themselves Gentiles through generations, centuries now this is gone. You understand? Go to, go back now. No, give me Hosea 1 and 9. Hosea 1 and 9. You can read that all, all on your own. I'm just going to get to the point. Hosea chapter 1 verse 9. So Ephraim or northern kingdom became not a people. When you're not a people, you're a Gentile. Hosea chapter 1 and verse 9. Then said God, call his name La Laomi, 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 for ye are this not is talking about northern kingdom. When you read the book of Hosea, it's primarily northern kingdom. Read it again. Then God then said, God, call his name Laomi, for ye are not my people. For you, Ephraim, or you, Israel, you, northern kingdom, are not my people. Y'all ain't my people. And I will not be your God. You're going to, you're a Gentile now. I'm going to leave you all to yourself. Go back. Give me Acts 15 and 14 now. So now we see why, why Peter and, the, and, the, and the, those of the circumcision with him were astonished. Wow, they got the spirit just like we got the spirit. Because they were not a people anymore. Go ahead. Acts chapter 15, verse 14. Simeon hath declared how God... At Simeon or Simon Peter when you read verse 7 declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. The Gentiles in this verse is northern kingdom. Read. To take out of them a people for his name. So we're going to connect this and read all the way down to 16 to prove it's talking about the children of Israel. Read it again. Verse 14. Simeon have declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. The Gentiles. Go ahead. To take out of them a people for his name. Uh, for his name. Read. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. The words of the prophets, as it is written. Where is it written? It's written in Amos chapter 9. Read. After this, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. Wow. The tabernacle of David. So those Gentiles in verse 14 are still under the tabernacle of David. They just fell. They became not a people, brothers. They were broken. Read. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So all praise to the Most High, brothers and sisters. I pray you learn something, that Cornelius is an Israelite. And with that, I'm Captain Amaziah. Soldier Mahalalil. And we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>